Welcome to Equipped Coach Chris here. Uh, we're going to start off today using our band to work some shoulder range of motion. If you don't have a band, that's fine. You can just use those arms, use some intrinsic tension. So let's go and pull that band apart. Good tension here, straight arms. Try to turn those thumbs to the sky. Brace through that belly as you take that band overhead with those straight arms, working through that sticking point, which is typically about right here, and working all the way to that low back. Still keeping those arms straight as you work back around and just give you a couple passes at your pace. Quick little call out. We tend to get people going through this one pretty quick, just kind of going through the motion. Try to slow it down and make sure you have appropriate tension. That even goes for if you do not have a band and you're just working through that range of motion, still making sure we're challenging that sticking point. Let's work with one more if you can. All the way back around. Excellent. All right, go and toss that band off to the side safely. Don't hit anybody. All right, we're going to go into our RDL, our squat, and our double lunge. Five reps. Let's get those feet underneath the hips. Nice, strong hinge, driving those hips back. Nice, strong squat. And then that double lunge. Five reps of each just to get that body woken up. Hinge, squat, double lunge. Let's work that reverse lunge. A little bit nicer on the knee, especially getting started. Got two more if you're with me. Hinge, squat, strong double lunge. Last one if you're with me. We'll have a little bit of time. If you're working a little slower pace, that's absolutely fine. Go ahead and finish up those five reps. And then we'll be using the actual movements for the rest of the warm up. I complain now that my garage is cold. Summertime, I'll be complaining it's hot. All right, so we're going to have one piece of equipment. Uh, let's start off with moderate as we go through our practice reps. So our first movement, you can either do a staggered RDL or a true staggered deadlift. Hope my power's not flickering or else I'm losing internet. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that weight into our left hand, nice and tall. We're going to slide that left foot back about maybe a foot um, I'll step back there. So the RDL looks a little something like this. We're driving that hip back, stay nice and squared off, and then nice and tall. Let's go two more reps of that RDL. Excellent. And if you want to do a true suitcase pickup, you're going to work more of a hinge, and then you're going to actually pull towards the ground, working more of that true deadlift off the floor. All right? Let's go and bring that weight up to a rack position. All right, we're going to be working a push press. So remember, that's a dip and a drive. So let's dip, punch. Now I want you to pause. Now I want you to count to four on the way down. Three, two, one, dip, punch. Down, three, two, one, dip, punch. Down, three, two, one. Excellent. So we're going to push press with an eccentric load on the way down. Let's switch over to our right. Right foot comes back, heels off the ground, we're in a nice staggered position. We'll go with those three RDLs. That's probably going to be what I'm going to coach you through today. But again, if you want to go with that true deadlift, it looks a little something like this, where you're actually going all the way to the ground and that nice strong hinge. Yeah? All right, let's get that rack position. All right, strong dip, strong punch, and then down, three, two, one, dip, down, three, Two, one, punch, down, three, two, one, and relax. All right, so that's our first superset. We're working that staggered RDL, then do a push press left side, staggered RDL, then push press right side. All right, staying with our warm up weight, we're going to go into our rotational lift. I'm going to be working hip to shoulder today, so I'm going to go a little heavier throughout the workout, but I'll give you another option if you're working a lighter weight. So we have the kettlebell by the horns. Or we have our dumbbell working uh, either end of it. Athletic position, we're going to take it to that left hip. And then I want you to stand explosively, taking that weight to just the right shoulder. Okay? Let's go one more. Hinge, shoulder. All right? Now we're going to fully extend. If you have a lighter weight, we're going to go hip and then punch. Hip, punch. Excellent. Let's go right hip. All right, load it up. Shoulder. Hip, shoulder, now extend if you have a lighter weight. Hip, punch, hip, punch. Excellent. 
Remember, your belly button is the flashlight. Your belly button shines on the light or on the weight as you work that hinge. So don't outrun your belly button or else it's going to be all the way back. All right, this is where things get fun. Let's take that weight into your left hand. I want you to give me a nice wide stance. Dumbbell or kettlebell, left hand, doesn't matter. So I want you to load up that right side. Okay, so we're working more of that Kazakh squat. And as we transition over towards your left, you're going to switch. As we transition back to right, you're going to switch back to left. Back to right hand. Left hand. Right hand. And then later, if you want to go a little quick, you can punch side to side as quick as you like as we work through that one later, feeling that midsection work. All right? Our last superset, we're going to be working our squat to handle. Again, you're working through these movements with me. Don't just stand there. You're going to be bored out of your mind. We're almost done with our warm up. If you're working a kettlebell, you're bottom up. If you have a dumbbell, you're holding either end, squat position, goblet hold, you're pulling down, nice strong squat, stand tall. That weight goes to the right side of your head, then works around the head to that halo, and then back to your goblet squat to halo. For time's sake, we're going to do two reps of that. We're going to finish things off today with an alternating swing. It's going to be our last movement. If you have a dumbbell, use that dumbbell long ways, all right? So it hinges through, it's long, your thumb is to the sky. If you're working a kettlebell, you have that nice strong hinge, hike it back, switching up top when it's weightless. Excellent, all right? So 15 seconds, we're going to get rolling. Going back to a little bit more challenging weight now. You got to do that warm up weight. Staggered RDL starts us off. So it's a nice strong deadlift to get that weight up. Left hand, left foot slides back. Drive those hips back. Load up that right hamstring and then stand tall. Low, stand. Low, stand. Excellent. Control the way down. You're staying strong through that left shoulder. So opposite hand, opposite foot striving through the ground. Feel that deep stretch, and then extending through the hip, all the way through that hip. If you can, take it all the way to the ground. If you want to work more of that suitcase deadlift, all the way to the floor, all the way up. Totally up to you. Three, two, relax. I'm going to keep that weight in my left hand because we're about to rack it up. All right, so we're going to come up to that rack position. On that left side, again, we have our push press with the centric load on the way down. So find your athletic position. Dip and punch. Hold. Down. Three, two, one. Punch. Down. Three, two, one. Punch. Down. Three, two, one. Punch. Your pace from here. Nice and slow on the way down. Find that rack. And then explode. This fatigue becomes a little bit different than what we're used to. You're going to feel that power being exhausted much faster due to that eccentric load. Again, we're on left side. We're still on our first set. We just got done with our staggered RDL. And now we're wrapping up our last rep of our push press. And relax. Weight to ground. Switch it over to that right side. You're working that staggered RDL. So let's go and deadlift it up nice and strong. That right foot's going to slide back just a hair. Most of the weight's in the left leg. Working that strong hip hinge. And then back up tall. Pressing that right hip back. Sorry, left hip back. As we hold on with that right hand. And we can add some power to that hip extension. Just like that push press. Work that eccentric load on the way down, and then punch. Feel that belly tighten. Punch. Got about 15 seconds. Good, strong tension through that right shoulder. There's no need to reach the weight. Three, two, one. Finish up that last rep. You can set the weight down if you like. I'm going to stay in a whole position because we're about to rack and work that push press on that right side. All right, strong rack position. Athletic stance. Pulling that midsection. Dipping the knees. Dip. Punch. Down. Three, 
two, one, dip, punch. Down three, two, one, dip, punch. Your pace. So you're doing that push press. It's not as much of a squat as it is that little dip in the knees. Working that explosiveness, that linking from heel through the hand. Nice and slow on that way down. Last one, make it count. Once you finish up that rep and get back to rack, take it to the floor. All right, so we're through our first set. Moving back to that left side, you know, that staggered RDL, we're going with that contralateral. All right, so let's go and pick it up in that left hand. Left foot's going to slide back, brace through that midsection, drive those hips back. Let's work. Just give a little side profile on this one. Okay? We're really driving the hip back. We're not rounding the back. The chest stays proud. And hopefully what you notice, my kettlebell stay in line with that right leg, right? So I'm working legs. I'm really keeping that weight down my midline. Even though that left foot's slightly back, my midline is really built around that right leg. Right up. Five seconds of work, maybe two more reps on your pace. Three, two, one, relax. All right, gonna be going to that rack position on the left side. So which kettlebells you have, it may have a front or back side, I have a kettlebell backwards. That's why I set it down. Athlete position, brace through that midsection, dip in the knees, punch, hold, down. Three, two, one, and punch. And punch. Make sure that midsection stays strong, supporting that low back, supporting those hips. Is our last set on that left side. With that eccentric load, that control coming down, you're going to feel a lot of different parts of the body that typically have to compensate if you're just dropping that weight. And relax once you finish up that rep to the floor. All right. Last set, right side, and then we're moving on to our rotational lift and that Kazakh pass, that little fun move that we snuck in today. All right, deadlift it up, right side. Right foot's gonna slide back, press those hips back, load up that hamstring, nice and tall. So what I'm hoping you're feeling on these cross body movements, these contralateral movements, you're feeling that midsection, you're feeling that pull across the body. So as I'm extending through the hip, feeling everything activate from right side to left hip. A lot of core work today. If you haven't noticed, which every movement that comes is going to activate and challenge that pillar. Last rep. Excellent. All right. Whenever you're ready, go rack that weight on up. Find that strong rack position. And this is our last push press for the day. All right. Brace. Athletic stance. Remember to say dip in the knee. Dip. Punch. Control down. Dip, punch, and down. Three, two, one, punch. Your pace, you can hang out in that rack position as long as you need to, or in that top position as long as you need to. What about that four count on the way down? 15 seconds. Last one here, finish up that nice, clean, strong rep, and to the floor. All right, so everybody join us late. We're about to move into our rotational lift. We're going to be going hip to shoulder if you're going with a challenging weight, which is what I'm going to be doing. But if you want to go hip to extension, you certainly can. All right, so we have the horns of the kettlebell or the sides of the dumbbell, athletic position, 
Belly button points at the way and it comes down. Left hip, and then right shoulder. Hip, shoulder. Hip, shoulder. And then extend if you like. Hip, punch. Hip, punch. And I'm going back to shoulder. Got a little heavier weight today. Stay a little tighter. A little more explosive. Concentrating on midsection and hip strength. So you're driving that hip back. You're going to that shoulder as quickly as possible. Three, two, one. Relax. So I know I said this one early. If you were here, uh, if you're here early in class, that belly button needs to point the weight. Don't outrun your belly button because if you outrun your belly button, it becomes all low back. So make sure that belly button goes with that weight. On your opposite side. Going right hip. Punch. Hip. Shoulder. Hip. Shoulder. Hip. Extend if you can. Hip. Extend if you can. Your pace. And let that foot that you're turning away from, if it wants to pivot, if that foot wants to turn, that's fine. Okay? You can extend through and finish through the toes. But when we load, that heel is down. Three, two, one. Relax. All right, so we're going into our Kazakh squat with our transition. Real quick, we're going to be on wide base. The movement looks a little something like this without weight. All right, so now I have my weight in my left hand. I'm going to load up my right foot. So opposite foot, opposite hand. As I transition to the left, it's going to switch to my right, left, right, left, your pace. Feel that strong pillar, that strong midsection. As we transition side to side, going as low as you like, but making sure we're staying on that heel. So from the side, and I'll give a demo in a second, from the side, this Kazakh squat looks like a squat. And relax, so what do I mean by that? You can't tell I'm doing a lateral lunge right now. It looks like I'm squatting, okay? I'm in this position, all right? That's a bad pivot. You got a pitcher. <laughs> All right. We got horns. We got hip. They explode. Hip. Shoulder. Hip. Shoulder. Extend if you like. But if you're going heavy and you're really paying attention to that hip strength, that midsection, you may want to work just work hip, just shoulder. So we're already on our second round. We've got two rounds of everything today. Seven seconds. You're gonna get a little breather as we switch sides. You're staying tight in that midsection. Three, two, one, relax. So this is a lot of work within a short amount of time. So if, if we get to the end of that set, and you feel like you're just getting really sloppy reps, just stop. Fatigue is the goal, not failure. Okay, we don't get long recovery. So if you start hitting failure, you're uh, in for a lot of trouble. If you're in for a lot of pain, not good pain. Right hip, shoulder, hip, shoulder. And again, if you add that extension, you punch all the way through, make sure that rib cage stays in, pivot through that foot, explode through that hip. Use that strength through those legs. Ten seconds. We're moving on to that Kazakh squat for the final time, and then we're moving on to our squat to halo and our alt swing. So we're going to really finish metabolic today and relax. Woo! Midsection is going to feel it tomorrow. All right. Let's go ahead and set up that weight inside that base. Keep yourself that wide base and wide setup. Turn those toes out a little bit. Feel like you need ankles. All right. Let's grab on that weight. Left hand. 
Load up that right heel. Load up left heel, right hand. Switching. Side to side. This is a fun one. I enjoy this one actually more than just doing lateral lunges, even though it's weighted. Get a lot of midsection work, a lot of upper back. Fifteen seconds. So when I get to our final rounds, our final squat to halo and swing, relax. Okay, now I'm going to drop weight a bit. I'm actually going to drop down about 25% in weight as we get more of this metabolic series. So listen to how you're feeling. All right, if you're a little gassed, you want to drop, if you're feeling good, this is your, this is your only workout today, and you stay with your weight. Challenge yourself. All right? Set up with that goblet squat position. If you're having a kettlebell, I challenge you to go bottoms up. Elbows drop down. Pull down that squat. Around the head with the halo. Back down. Opposite direction. Get a lot of midsection work today. You know, these two movements seem like shoulders and legs. We gotta stay tight through that pillar, making sure that lumbar, which has a serious case of Napoleon syndrome, doesn't try to take over. Four, three, two, one. Relax. All right. If you have a kettlebell, you're starting from bottom position. If you have a dumbbell, you can start from that hang. Okay, go with that hinge, and then switching up top when it's weightless. If you have a kettlebell, you're with me. Athletic position. Hinge. Tension through that shoulder. Hike it back. Switch up top. So for those of you who stay with a heavier weight, good for you. But if you hit, if you get gassed before this 45 seconds, get rid of that weight, all right? Take that recovery so you can do it next round. Keep that weight high, whether you have dumbbell or kettlebell. It's going high up in that upper inner thigh. You should feel that wrist touch the groin area before you snap through the hip. Three, two, one, relax. I know a lot of people's eyes get big when talking about that high height. All right, but if you let that weight go low, this tends to happen. And we don't like our vertebrae to point out like that. So make sure we go high, we get that hinge set up like we're jumping, all right? Goblet squat set up. Elbows, elbows pull down, drop it. Halo, pull down, halo, your pace. So we started off with some strong concentration work, challenging the RDLs with that hinge, working that push press. Now we got full body going on. We're feeling everything. We're feeling that heart rate pick up. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Relax. Woo! All right. Off swing coming up, and that is it. All right, I want power. I'm going to snap. You can imagine you're jumping. Okay? It's the same movement as jumping as a swing. Set it up. Let's work. Okay, if you're working with that dumbbell, if you're working that off swing with that dumbbell, your hand is staying vertical the entire time. So pretty much your thumb is always pointing to the sky. You get more of a neutral grip. If you have a kettlebell, thumb turns back as you hinge, and then you can either serve the platter or go palm down up top. Three, two, one. Relax. You are awesome. Take a couple deep breaths. We're gonna get a quick stretch, and we're all with our weekend. If you want to stay moving for a second, go ahead and get your weights out of the way. 
We'll grab a sip of water. All right. Let's go ahead and sink back up. Nice athletic stance. Sink down, deep breath through the nose. Exhale, top. One more. Exhale. All right, let's give our upper body some love today. I know a lot of times they're hunched around hips. All right, let's take hands behind the back. Grab onto that right wrist. I'm not going to make you do a full handcuff. All right, put the shoulder blades back and lift the hands off the back. And let's just sit here and breathe. In this position, you should feel the front of your shoulders, anterior delts. Maybe feeling pecs underneath the collarbone. And relax, shake those arms out. All right, if you got some time, which I hope you do, give those hip flexors some love. Simple quad stretches get the job done as well. Maybe go see the position, work a nice hamstring stretch. It doesn't always have to be crazy and sexy. Good basic movements get it done. Thank you all for joining me. Happy Friday. We'll see you back Monday uh, with Strength Flow and Equipment. Y'all stay classy out there.